In this video, we're going to talk about five heat pumps you probably had no idea even existed, and we're also going to talk about how and why these are revolutionary technologies. And although I'm going to break things down in layman's terms to make this palatable and easy to understand, I will also be using a lot of technical terminology. So if you are unfamiliar with some of the efficiency ratings or terms I'm referencing or anything that I mention, I'll make sure to link a video at the end that breaks down these efficiency ratings in layman's terms for your convenience. And before we get started, I do want to preface this by saying that if you happen to live overseas and you are tuning in from somewhere in Europe or Canada, then you may have already heard about some of the heat pumps we're referencing in this video. In fact, you may already be using one of them, but if you're a Yankee like me, some of the technology that we'll be talking about in this video will blow your mind because it is an absolute game changer in the heat pump space. I don't know why, but it's so unfair that Europeans always get the cool shit before us. And the reason that these technologies are so revolutionary is because not only do they work great in cold weather, but they also provide a variety of applications from radiant heating domestic hot water, and even forced air hydronics, which means that with these heat pumps, you can do everything from air conditioning in your home to radiant in-floor heating and domestic hot water. And if you're not that familiar with what heat pumps are and how they work, I'll make sure to link another video at the end about heat pumps and cold weather, because one of the most common myths that we hear is that heat pumps do not work in cold weather, and that could not be further from the truth. The truth is that all of the heat pumps we're going to be talking about in this video work excellent in cold weather, and that's why they're so revolutionary, or at least part of why they're so revolutionary, but even traditional air source heat pumps work well in cold weather, provided that you get the right one. Now the inverter heat pumps that we install are rated for cold climates, and those are inverters, which make them extremely efficient by comparison to their single stage or two stage counterparts. And when we pair them with a dual fuel backup, they work great in cold climates like Colorado and elsewhere. But if you happen to live in a very cold climate, like most of the interior of Canada, for example, a lot of air source heat pumps will still have a hard time keeping up efficiently just because of how cold it gets. But that's where the heat pumps that we are talking about in this video shine. And the first one we're going to talk about is what's called an air to water heat pump. Now there are a few manufacturers of air to water heat pumps out there and different refrigerants involved. But the cool thing about an air to water heat pump is that they have much higher COP ratings, which stands for coefficient of performance, which means they are much more efficient than their air source counterparts. Now I explain this more in depth in the video that will be linked at the end of this video. But the bottom line is that this is a reflection of how efficient a heat pump is by comparison to its electric heat counterpart. The higher the COP rating, the more efficient the system. And the reason the air to water heat pumps are so revolutionary is because the COP ratings are substantially higher and the low ambient ratings they are rated to are much lower as well. This means that they can operate in a variety of climates at much colder temperatures than their air source counterparts while also maintaining those higher efficiencies, making them economically viable as an alternative to a traditional furnace or boiler. Now, there are a few downsides I will mention a little bit later, but the bottom line is that these work and they work well. Another benefit is that they are not that new of a technology and have been around in Europe. So when these start getting installed more and more over the next few years with all of the heat pump tax credits available in the United States, you'll be benefiting from the fact that these are tried and tested pieces of equipment, not some new experimental technology. Now, this equipment, this means that it not only provides space heating via a variety of hydronic piping applications like radiant floors or forced air hydronics, but they can also provide your domestic hot water. The downside that I mentioned earlier that is currently the pricing on this equipment is typically higher by comparison than their air source counterparts, but hopefully we will see these coming down in price over the next few years as they gain in popularity. Now, number two is a variation of the air to water heat pumps I mentioned, and that is R290 monoblock heat pumps. Now, R290 is a type of refrigerant, and it's a game changer for a few reasons, and we're actually already using it in some applications in the United States, and monoblock simply means that the entire refrigerant circuit is contained outside in the condenser, meaning there's no longer a need to run refrigerant lines inside the home. Now, the refrigerant R290, like I mentioned, it's actually already being used in certain applications in the United States, but it is not widespread because it's actually just propane and therefore very flammable, and currently the laws are 
written in such a way that the charge amount of the refrigerants in the same flammability class as propane are limited so we can't have it except in small applications like perhaps an ice maker but the reason that monoblock design is unique is that the entire refrigerant circuit is outside so there's no need for propane anywhere inside your home and this eliminates or at least mitigates it as a safety concern because the only person really subject to the flammability hazard is actually us your service guy when we are working on it and as I mentioned earlier these are already all over Europe and very popular for another reason related to this refrigerant is the fact that R290 has an extremely high COP efficiency ratings the ability to heat water as high as 160 or 180 degrees Fahrenheit and the other air to water heat pumps I mentioned earlier use a refrigerant like R410A or R32 and the downside to this is that they can't be used with traditional radiators because radiators and baseboard heat in a boiler system require a water temperature that is at least 170 or 180 degrees in order to get proper heat transfer so if R290 monoblock heat pumps do make their way to the USA, it will be a game changer for a lot of applications because of their ability to provide higher hot water temps. This would allow them to replace traditional boilers, which would be a huge plus for our customers that have boilers, but also have solar setups on the house and want to utilize their solar array for a heat pump. And before I tell you number three, if you're enjoying this content so far, please make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. It's a free way you can support the channel and help it grow if you've received value from the content we put out it is much appreciated and also just to mention just in case you're unaware we are an HVAC service company and actually provide service in Denver Colorado as well as Phoenix Arizona and we'll be coming to several markets over the years in Texas soon so if you're in need of HVAC assistance there's a link in the description to our online scheduler as well for your convenience and number three is geothermal heat pumps and like I said if you're in Canada or overseas or even if you're in the United States you've probably heard of geothermal but night might not have realized it's actually just a heat pump and there's actually several types of geothermal heat pumps available the big difference between a geothermal heat pump and an air source heat pump is that the geothermal heat pump actually ties into a ground loop that hydronic fluid such as propylene glycol circulates through and the benefits of these types of systems is that regardless of what happens to the outdoor air temperature your geothermal heat pumps efficiency is basically unaffected because the ground temperature does not fluctuate as much depending on the types of loops that are drilled. Vertical loops especially benefit from the fact that they are two or 300 feet deep and therefore even if it's negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit outside your heat pump can still keep up and there are also water source geothermal heat pumps that can run a loop through a lake or a river for example so if you happen to live on a water property off the grid this might be a great for solution for you. The bottom line is that the COP rating on many of these systems is over five or six regardless of the outdoor air temperatures which makes them extremely efficient in cold weather and an economically viable replacement option and right now through 2032 there is a 30 percent tax credit with no cap for any geothermal system installed now one of the things I like about these types of heat pumps as well is that they tie in very well with radiant heat so if you have a boiler currently and you have radiant in-floor heating and you are wanting to go to a heat pump this is definitely an option and a lot of our customers in Colorado are interested in transitioning to heat pumps because we're actually one of the sunniest states and a lot of our customers actually have solar panels and therefore want to reduce their exposure to volatile energy prices and really lean on this heat pump technology as a viable solution in order to do that. And number four is what's called heat recovery heat pumps. Now heat recovery is a unique application normally found in commercial settings as opposed to residential settings because it is a three or four pipe system that allows refrigerant to flow between multiple units within different rooms or air handlers within hotels for example and if you have the heat turned on in one room but the air conditioning turned on in another room it will actually transfer the heat energy from that room to the next room through the process of heat recovery inside the refrigeration circuit and this is an absolute game changer and if this does start coming to the residential space for people that are willing to spend the money for the ultimate comfort, you'll be able to transfer heating and cooling 
throughout your home. And the benefit to this is that if granny happens to like it at 80 degrees in the guest room and the rest of the family likes it at 65 degrees in the main home when the system is running, it will actually be able to run heating in one room and cooling in another room and actually transfer heat accordingly between the rooms in order to keep everyone happy. And on that note, number five is water source heat pumps. Now this is similar to heat recovery in the respect that you see these in a lot of commercial buildings and industrial spaces that tie into a central chiller, but essentially what these systems do is pull heat out of a water loop and they use the water as their source of heat exchange. The benefit to this type of system is that water transfers heat at 25 times the density compared to air and all of the technologies we touched on previously can incorporate a variety of applications, whether that's air to water or water to water, especially in the case of geothermal applications. But the bottom line is that I'm excited to see what heat pump technologies become more mainstream in the United States. States and North America over the next several years. And we're definitely looking forward to installing them and letting you know what we think about these products along the way. And if you happen to be in one of the areas we service, like Denver, Colorado, or Phoenix, Arizona, you can actually schedule an appointment with us for free. We come out for free for all first-time customers, whether that's for a service call or annual maintenance, or if you're just looking for an estimate for system replacement. And there's actually a link in the description below where you can actually schedule online at your convenience, as well as an up-to-date list of the cities and states that we service so you can stay up to date when we start servicing your metro. And as promised earlier, there's a video popping up on the screen right now about efficiency ratings as well as another video YouTube thinks you should watch. So make sure you check those out if you haven't done so already and we'll catch you on the next episode.